You know what? I've always been interested in how things work. It's just a natural curiosity and it's kind of in my DNA. And when my boy started playing lacrosse, I started to take a real interest in the equipment and how do heads work and stringing and what different stringing does. So as I'd string, I'd get feedback from them and I'd hear all these words like whip or tightening or shooting strings. I, I kind of understood what I was doing, but not really. And I wanted to do a deeper dive to find out exactly what each bit does. So as a consequence, I, I built this thing. Cue the music. I call it the lacrosse bot, and weighing in at over 271 pounds, it's no lightweight. Solid steel in its construction, it has the ability to repeat the same shot on the same trajectory over and over again. For no better description, it's a lacrosse shooting robot. So what does all of this mean? Well, I'm glad you asked. Before we start talking about the future, we've got to rewind it a little bit and talk a little bit about the past. Equipment that tests sporting equipment is nothing new. It's been around in different sports and different industries, well, since the birth of competitive sport. Growing up, I used to play a lot of golf. And in the golf industry, everything is qualifiable and quantifiable. How far a ball will travel, launch angles, spin trajectories, nearly everything is quantifiable and qualifiable and can be scientifically tested. It's arguable, but back in the 1970s, it changed dramatically in the golf industry with the development of a machine called the Iron Byron. It was the gold standard for testing. So much so, the USGA used it for nearly 25 years to test the distance standard of golf balls. The Iron Byron changed everything. The golf industry embraced it with both hands. It was no longer about feel, it was about fact, and it could be proven. And having said, all of that, what's next? Well, two things. We have to work out, one, what are we testing? And two, how does the machine actually work? So when it comes to the topic of testing, we can't go any further without having a conversation on whip. Fundamentally, the difference between one cross versus another, if you pick up one and then you throw another one, is how much whip it actually has. So we now have to come up with a proper definition of whip. All right, how's this? Whip, it's the moment of inertia at which a lacrosse head releases a lacrosse ball subject to the centrifugal force applied to it and its coefficient of friction created by both its pocket and mesh. What, too complicated? Okay, all right. Whip, how much hold a lacrosse head has subject to its stringing design and the player's ability to apply force? No? even like bring it down even more. As simple, as simple as it can be. Okay, how, how about this? Whip, the point at which a ball releases from the lacrosse head. Yes? Yes! <laughs> of course it's more complicated than that, but uh, there'll be plenty of time for complication. Trust me. Now's the time where the rubber meets the road and have a look at how we record whip on the lacrosse bot. We take advantage of the fact that the lacrosse bot is a machine and it can do what no human can do. It repeats the same thing exactly every single time. Working with the physics of spring tension, the lacrosse bot is effectively a giant catapult. We then measure the impact point of the lacrosse ball and with a bunch of fancy trigonometry, we can tell what angle the lacrosse ball was released at. From there, we create an easy to read label that allows us to compare one head with another. By shooting at 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70 miles an hour plus, we observe and record the release point of each and every different head. And that enables us to see the difference between one versus another. You see, it's all about the angles. 
Let me grab the mini stick and I'll show you. So, if we have a ball that comes out when our stick is in this position, we consider this as zero degrees. If the ball comes out in this position, this may be, say, five degrees. Or in an extreme instance, it comes out in this position, that may be 20 degrees. So then what? This is the interesting point. And this is where my knowledge increased dramatically. If I was to take a head and I would put it through the process and then modify that head slightly, put it through the process again and have a look at the different numbers, I can tell exactly what one difference makes to another. So for an example, this particular head has two shooting strings. If I was to simply take one of those shooting strings out and put it through the process, I'd be able to compare the two. And then I would be able to quantifiably tell you the difference of what one shooting string makes compared to two. Let me give you an example of how that might work in a practical sense by comparing this with this. This is an old, used, shiny lacrosse ball. And you've heard about the guys and girls down the club complaining about that. Oh, it was the ball, it's shiny. Excuses, excuses, excuses. Versus this, fresh, out of the packet, the signature premium lacrosse ball. So if I put both of these through the machine and record the difference, and I haven't changed anything else, I'll be able to prove or disprove the myth that it was the ball versus, I don't know, a level of skill. So let's have a look at the data for a new ball. As we can see, from 30 to 40 and 50 miles per hour, it's quite close, ranging from 19 to 18 degrees whip. So in the passing range, this particular stringing is quite consistent. As we increase the speed to 60 miles per hour, it starts to have less whip, and when we hit 70 miles an hour, it hits zero. And once it hits zero, that's when we stop testing because the player loses controllable influence over the shot with the ball feeling like it's coming out of the top of the head. So if you compare that to the old ball, you can see that it's a total different story. At the lower speeds, it's already throwing with less whip. And once we hit 50 miles per hour, it's at three and a half degrees. And then it doesn't even make 60 miles per hour before it throws out of the top of the head. Well, that wasn't even a contest. The shiny ball, versus the brand new one. As far as excuses, oh, it was the ball. You know what? There's a good chance it was. So where to from here? Well, me and the lacrosse bot, we've been doing this for some time now, and we've got a load of data and information to share. And I'm really excited for the future and being able to share as much information as I can, whether that be to an entry level player all the way to an elite player trying to fine tune their game. So until the next video, Stay well and play well. Oh, I shouldn't like that smell as much as what I do.